Hello, party people. As always, what's the first step to word problem success? No worries, iPhone, and we'll see if it was the same exact one. So the first step here is going to be read the question. So when we read the question, we see that it's going to say right over here, let's grab a red, give me one moment. So we see that it says, hey, how long was the train traveling for? Messed that up. How long was the train traveling for? So if we take a look at that question and we take a look at the answer choices that are right next to us, everybody, the answer choices, everybody, basically we're looking for what? What's the T word that we're looking for? That's right, Jay, we're looking, for t uh, we're looking for time. Looking for time. We see that it says hours as the unit for all of these answers, and we're looking for how long. So we can start off, even if we don't know what topic we're dealing with, even if we have no inkling or no clue, we can still say, yeah, the question says, how long was it traveling for? And the answer choices say hours, we're looking for time. So we'll start off just like that. We're looking for time. Time equals what? That's what we want. Everybody, do we agree with that first step? Again, that's the first step in every single word problem. Do we know what we want? Yes or no, are we good on that? All right, so sweet. Step two, hey, what information do we have? This is the point in the problem where we're not just gonna write everything down, we're gonna interpret what it means. So this is an example of how we can get that done in a calm, cool, and collected fashion. Remember that when you feel that something is complicated, it's most likely because you haven't set your foundations. So remember to start with the Math Basics course. That way you can set those foundations and then come back to something like this and understand that there's two separate things. There's actually setting up the English into math and then actually doing the math. So remember that, get your Math Basics set up. That way you can focus more on word problems like this and dominate them at the end of the day. So. We'll begin over here by reading the actual information, knowing that whatever it is that we read, we're trying to make some sort of connection between whatever this is and time. Time for the train, that's all we care about. So here we go. I'll go ahead and just pretend that I can read all that behind my head. So we see that a train is traveling at an average speed of 55 miles per hour, eventually travels 220 miles. Okay. We had two numbers there. We're gonna have to write them down to really just make sense of it. So number one, right over here, we see that it's traveling, average speed, 55 miles per hour. Everyone, how can we categorize that information? 55, everybody, if we're just looking at the word or the number 55, does the number 55 mean anything by itself? Just the number 55? Does the number 55 mean anything if you just saw the number 55 written on paper? Does that mean anything? Nope, not by itself, exactly, great, exactly. Thank you for the emphasis. Not by itself. If we're just looking at the number 55, that doesn't mean diddly squat. We need to interpret the context, the words around it. That's really what's gonna tell the story. Because remember, I can change that 55 out with 27, 52, 95, 112, doesn't matter. We can change that with whatever we want, but it's the context around it that's gonna give it away. We see that it says average speed, and we also see the phrase miles per hour, 55 miles per hour. Everyone, what are we describing when we use the phrasing miles per hour after a number? What are we referring to? And boom, look at that. Already two people instantly shout out saying rate. And so if you're sitting here and you're saying, hey, my first class in a while, my first class ever, really here for a refresher, notice how we haven't talked about a single topic yet. Not a single one. But I can tell you we're looking for time. This right here is a rate because I know that the word per connects to units. Miles per hour, dollars per hour, you know, toys per day. Any unit that has the word per connecting two units with a number, that's a rate. So 55 miles per hour, that is a rate that we can write down. Right here, miles per hour. And again, it's the word per that gives it away. And then when we see here, it says, hey, 
this train that's traveling at this rate, it'll eventually travel 220 miles. So we just have that there. We can write that out, no problem. Travels 220 miles. All right, my math party people. So at this point, given what we're trying to find, given the information we have, what topic are we dealing with? Ines, I think you have it down. I think you are correct. Ines here says distance equals rate times time. Steph, in agreement, repeating the call there, Jay as well. Yeah, distance equals rate times time. That's exactly what we're looking at here. Because 220 miles, that's just a distance. You know, if it's just feet or inches or miles or kilometers, you know, that's just distance. And that's something that we're trying to achieve. And we can write that down. Right here. And we have the distance. So my party people, this is where knowing what the information means, that's where step three kicks in, where we're now trying to build a connection. This is where we're trying to build a connection. The information we have is going to be connected with the knowledge we have to get to the answer we're looking for. So if you didn't take the time to learn the formula for distance equals rate times time or practice solving it, we may feel a little intimidation at this point. Even though the question is two sentences long, it's okay to feel a little intimidated if we haven't had the practice. So the formula is this, feel free to write it down. The formula is distance equals rate times time. Right here, distance equals rate times time. And that's what we have as our formula. And now what we'll do is we'll plug in the information we have and we'll let the formula tell us how we should solve it. Because although you see rate times time, it really depends on what you're looking for. Because you'll multiply these to get distance. But if you already have distance, you'll have to divide to get rid of whatever you have to get whatever you want by itself. Let me show you. The distance that we're plugging in right here, that's going to be 220 miles. Then the rate that we were given was 55 miles per hour. And we will multiply that by time. My party people, do we agree with what I plugged in? Plugged in 220 for distance, 55 for rate. Are we in agreement with how we've handled things so far? So far, so good. Perfect. So then the next step, notice how we're looking for T. And if we're looking for T, well, T isn't by itself already. So when we take a look at T, we need to say, okay, uh, how do I get it by itself? Well, right now we're multiplying 55 times T. So the next step is going to be, well, getting rid of that 55, dividing 55 on both sides. And that's exactly what I'll do now. I'll go ahead, divide 55 on both sides. And what we have here, we'll go ahead and solve. So on the right side, that's going to cancel out. Leaving us with T equals 220 divided by 55. We can break this down. We don't need to use long division. You can try to guesstimate. Um, you know, with mental math, a lot of my party people here will see that that's going to be four right away. Another way that we can do this is by simplifying with numbers that we know fit into both. 22 is a multiple of 11. 55 is a multiple of 11. For 55, that's 11 times 5. For 22, that's 11 times 2. So we can divide by 11 on the top and the bottom to help us out just a little bit, just a little bit. So what we're going to have is going to be, this is going to simplify over. 55 divided by 11 is 5. 220 divided by 11 is going to be 20. And so then everybody, 20 divided by 5 will give us what? Yeah, that'll give us 4. And there's our answer. Time in this question, what we're looking for is 4 hours. And there we are. Our final answer here, the correct answer, will be a. And there we go.
So before you pay any huge amount of dollars or money to anybody claiming that they can help you pass the ASVAB, you should always consider what they offer for free. With us, we're gonna be offering our full program for free for a full week. All you gotta do is do that right there or scan that QR code and you'll get access to all of our classes, practice problems, courses, everything for a full week so you know exactly how it works and you have the exact confidence that you need to raise your score. Get started now. I'll see you in there.